Well, good morning and welcome back to the shop. We're working on the 430 John Deere. In the last episode, we got the tractor split. We've uh, been successful. I went ahead and pulled the shifter housing off. Um, I was successful getting the input shafts, at least the PTO input shaft back into the clutch up in front. This shaft will have to be reattached to that before I can reach in there far enough to do that. But anyway, uh, I'm going to bring you in and show you some things that we have found. Uh, some good things, some not quite as, as good as we would uh, have liked, but uh, we're going to talk and see what we can maybe do about it. So stay tuned. The main issue with this is we were leaking oil out of the front of the transmission and it was ending up into the center frame up in here and then it would get high enough that it was leaking out. So I uh, presumed that I would have some seals leaking and uh, and I still think that is the case, but we've uncovered a couple of things that I think we need to uh, at least consider uh, drawing some attention to while we're in here. The first one, I want to bring you in here. If you look inside the transmission, transmission looks really good. Uh, so far, I haven't seen any issues with any bearings or... Uh, pieces of metal, anything like that in there, with the exception of a couple of things. One is we have a, an in play problem here. If you'll look back there at that rear bearing, you can see we have too much in play. So I'm going to make the attempt to lift that top shaft out of that transmission for a closer look. We don't appear to have any in play that we can, uh, uh, those are all the sliding gears on that, so I'll, I'll get a hold of this to make sure uh, with a pair of pliers, but first look, we don't seem to have much in play on the output shaft, which is good, but what we do have, we have a considerable amount of backlash. If you look right in there, we're actually, we have this, that much. The book is calling for six or eight thousandths and uh, we've got probably ten to twenty times that much anyway. So I'm not sure what we're going to do about that. If the depth of the pinion is set right into the ring gear then the adjustment would be removing shims and alternating shims side to side in the differential quill. And I don't know if I've got enough time at, at this point to deal with that. That would require removing both of the rear axle housings and basically supporting this case in the open. And uh, it's, it's going to be pretty in depth. So I'm thinking that I may leave that uh, for another time. But we are going to look at this input shaft and see if there's anything we need to do. I have already removed, uh, if you'll remember in the last episode, I have already removed the uh, PTO gear case which bolts to the front here. This is the PTO driven gear right here and uh, we're going to go over and take a look at that case because I believe it is one of the seals that needs to be replaced. So we'll move over to the shop table and take a look at that. One thing that I would certainly recommend to anybody, no matter what brand of tractor you've got, uh, is to get yourself a good parts book. Uh, these, these books are invaluable and I'll show you the section that we're actually working on here. This is the section in the book that covers the five-speed transmission and shafts with a continuous running PTO. So this shows you all of your different assemblies laid out in order uh, of the way they go. 
gives you the parts numbers over here that way you can go to uh, your dealer or to uh, whatever parts website that you use you've got the factory numbers here so you can cross reference those and so they're just they're just a wealth of information so a good parts book will be uh, a useful tool for you so we've got the PTO drive housing off of this uh, 430 and there's a couple of suspects that I'm thinking as far as getting the oil in here now we see this bearing cup down here this was a solid blank cover with shim so you could shim the preload by by adjusting this race in the housing so there could have been some seepage there but not enough to where I think uh, the main issue is so we've got a seal here this is the PTO drive gear uh, that the main that the big hollow uh, drive tube slips over you can see the driven gear in here and it drives that gear that uh, I showed you just a second ago so we've got two seals that we're looking for right here. One is a seal that seals around the outside of this uh, drive gear here. Then we also have a seal right here that actually seals the power transmission or the, the drive input shaft, which actually drives the transmission. Uh, seals that oil in here keeps it from working out through the center if you'll remember the PTO drives on the outside here the transmission drives through a shaft in the center I've already removed this snap ring from the back so y'all wouldn't have to see me struggle with that but we're going to press this out and see what we can come up with as far as taking a look at this seal okay here we go there we go now I don't want to drop this out of there so I'm going to get right down here and I'm going to reach up and I'm going to catch it as it's coming through back over to the bench and take a look at what we have okay so you see uh, I believe the bearing is is good on that but this is one of the seals that we're looking at it still appears to be pliable I'm really, really not sure what we've got, but the one thing that I do know uh, from all the research that I've done last night, this seal, unless they have superseded to another part number, is no longer available from Deer. Now, this one seems to be available. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this out and try to obtain a seal based on uh, dimensions so we will uh, think we'll go ahead and see if we've got an arbor that we can push this out let me lay that in there right like that see what I can come up with uh, we couldn't have hit that any closer if we'd have tried there 
So, okay, and let's. It's coming out. All right. Excellent. That's sitting there. Okay. Set that aside. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to measure this up and attempt to figure out what type of seal we're going to be looking for. Let me get my calipers and I'll be right back. Okay, most seals are sold in metric, metric dimensions, so we're going to have to convert uh, decimal to millimeters. So we'll start with the outside diameter, and it looks like we've got a 3879 so I'm going to write that down, 3.879, and we'll use the OD of the actual ceiling surface here for to try to find the inside diameter of the seal. Okay. All right, so we have a one, one eight, or no, we've got a one nine three eight. One point nine three eight. And then the last dimension that they will ask for will be your thickness of your seal. That seal is exactly one half of an inch, so that would be five hundred thousandths. So it'd be zero point five zero zero. So now we're going to take a, our uh, calculator here, and there's a few different ways of doing this. The one that I'm used to using is you multiply or divide by Point zero three nine four. So let me uh, take that. Let's take the OD point five. That didn't come out right. So it'd be point five divided by point zero three nine four. Okay, so it comes out kind of in between. Actually comes out like 12.69 millimeters, so we'll have to see if that's a 12 or a 13. Okay, the ID 1.938 Okay, it came out 49. 49, Let's see which one did I do there, wind is blowing my paper, let's see, 
Okay, so the ID comes out 49 millimeters and 3.879, that's a 98. So we're going to be looking for a 49 by 98 by 12 per se. They may not be exact, you'll have to see what the exact, and it's also possible that this is a proprietary seal, which would be a really bad deal, uh, considering that I need one and that it's only available from the manufacturer. So we'll uh, get to work on that. Uh, this seal is available from Deer. Uh, yeah, sorry, but uh, it's available from Deer. The end seal for the uh, uh, back end of the chop seal or the top shaft in the transmission is also available from Deer. But as most of you know that are dealing with these old tractors, uh, parts are harder and harder to get from the dealer, and uh, it's it's just becoming more di difficult. If they're not supplying it in the aftermarket, then then uh, we've got our work cut out for us. So that's where we are today on the 430 project. We'll bring you back when we've got more. Thanks again for watching.